Welcome, Word Faith Family Church, and all of you watching. We are here to help you learn something very important in the day and time we live in, and that's how to have joy in the midst of circumstances. You know, it is a truth that Jesus said in 1511. He said, my joy is full and I want your joy to be full. In fact, I'm commanding you that your joy could be full. Just take all of my joy in you. And 1511, go look at it and maybe we'll talk about that on Sunday. So, hey, I want to ask you something. I'm glad you're here tonight. How many of you glad you're here and not in jail? How many of you glad you're here and not in the best hospital? Okay, but how many of you are not going to raise your hand no matter what I say? Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> I laughed at that myself. How many of you know what this is? Camera uh, three, if you can do a close-up here, or camera one, somebody do a close-up anyway. What is this? Can you see what it is? Uh, you can't see what it is. On the screen, it's not there. It's a uh, it's tomato. It's a picture of a tomato. Do you know why I don't have tomatoes? Because the seeds are still in the packet. You have to decide to sow seeds if you want something to have. Do you all know what this picture is up close? Let's see if they can get it uh, there. There's camera. Okay, that camera's got These are carrots. Do you know why I don't have carrots? Because I haven't put the seeds in the ground. Here's some spinach. How many of you like spinach? I mean, every Popeye five fan like spinach. Do you know why I do not have spinach yet? The seeds are in the packet. You need to put things in the ground. The Word tells us that we need to take uh, and take the Word and hide it in our heart. And if we want to do things for God, here's the way it is. You take your Bible, shake it, the devil, it does nothing. But here it is. You take the Word, hide it in your heart. You have to put the Word in your heart. And then you have to begin to speak it, say it, and act on it. And the third part about acting joyfully on it is the biggest problem for most Christians because they know the Word. They know that Jesus loves them. They know that they're on their way to heaven. Mm, well, okay, we'll work on that one. <laughs> but getting them to act on the Word is a bigger thing. And I want to help us tonight learn to act on the Word and look to our future. Making sure that our future is going to be there because, you know, you can just live and, and not have much of a future. Without Jesus, you will have little or no future. But if we want to grab a hold of what God's going to do in our lives, we have to see the vision and act just like Jesus told us to do. This year, we're getting corrected through lots of things. Here's what the Word said already for us. Where there is no vision, the people perish. So you've got to know where you're going. You can't meander through life and expect anything wonderful to happen. You have to kind of find out why God puts you here. And there's not a heart beating on the face of the earth. Even a lot of people in prison. Well, everyone in prison, in fact. Everyone has a mission that God wanted them to do. And they got sidetracked. And you know, that's true for political leaders too. They get to Washington and get sidetracked. Their mission is to serve. Jesus said, I'm come that you would serve and serve me with a lot of joy. And serving leadership, servant leadership, is a wonderful thing to grab a hold of. The people will perish. It says in another translation, where, <clears throat> where there's no clear prophetic vision, people quickly wander away. Saw a video today, and maybe I'll share just a piece of it with you on Sunday, about a guy, they went out on the beach and asked people, what's your purpose in life? He said, well, just to sit here and keep my toes in the water and have fun. That looks like that's all I'm going to do. That's not a vision. That's just wasting some time. Uh, where there is no clear prophetic vision, people qu quickly wander away. And I love the message translation. If people can't see what God is doing, they'll stumble over themselves. They'll get lost, right? We need people to have a vision and see where God wants us to go. I always say it this way, where there is no people, there is no vision. Take your Bible, if you would be so kind, and turn with me. We're going to go over in just a moment to Jeremiah 29. Um, I, I want us to grab a hold of some things that the Bible said for us to help us 
change our attitude. Changing our attitude is probably the biggest thing that's got to happen for all of us. Babies like to be changed because they feel comfortable afterwards, you know? And you can quieten them down if you'll just change their diaper. Politicians need to be changed for the same reason, you know? They, are, they just have messed up too much and they need, they need to move along. <laughs> and then there are a lot of believers that need to change their attitude. If you're on your way to heaven, you ought to be a lot less grumpier than you are because you're going to heaven. The joy of the Lord ought to be your strength. You can't change what's going on around you until you start changing what's going on in you. If you'll change your inside of what you're thinking, your perspective, you've got to see that continually uh, that you have to keep working on the inside and not just what's on the outside. So with that in mind, here we are to 29.11. Here's what God says about you. I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. God, it's expecting you to be fully developed and carry out your life in a wonderful way. It goes on to say in another version, I know the plans I'm planning for you, saith Yahweh, plans of welfare, not of calamity. Every bit of calamity tests your mettle. If you're going through some stuff, know this. If there's a problem and you're not getting, quote, your way, or you're not getting your stuff done, there's a reason for that diversion. And it isn't from God, but it's to test your mettle. What do you think you ought, to be ha ought to be happening in your life? To give you a future and a hope. People are hopeless today. Coming through this COVID thing, now, I mean, just three weeks ago, everybody's got to have a mask. Now, you don't have to have a mask. <laughs> I'm thinking about the money we spend on masks. Yeah. Some mask dealer somewhere is living on probably Hawaii by now because they've sold so many masks, you know? They, and they aren't wearing a mask on the beaches of Hawaii. <laughs> the message translation says he wants to give us a hope. So we begin to think bigger, look bigger, act bigger, go ahead and decide we've got good things coming for us. So the title of tonight is simply this, that faith for your future in the next few days coming. Now, if you're going to prepare to go on a trip, don't you set some things apart you set money aside. If you're going on a, a trip somewhere, you start preparing things. You prepare your vehicle. Uh, Miss Rosella travels more than us right now, and she, she flies to places. She used to drive some, but she's gone all around the world. You have to pr prepare now with a passport. You have to get a ticket. You have to get accommodations. You have to plan for what's going to happen. Miss Cheryl and I took a... a trip of a lifetime last summer. It was her dream to go see a lot of the national parks. Well, we had to plan the dollars to go, the time to go, all of that. Praise God. And if you're thinking about uh, a Big Mac tonight after church, you have to plan. Where is one? Let's see. Oh, no, let's go to uh, Chick-fil-A. That'll be better for us. But then you get to Chick-fil-A and there's a long line and you think, McDonald's looks better. No, it doesn't. <laughs> you get in the Chick-fil-A line and they get you right through because they planned that you were coming. So I'm just saying you got to have faith and you got to prepare your future. You got to be looking into the future. You got to decide something's going to happen in my future that I haven't seen yet. You got to keep thinking and acting and looking and preparing. Something's about to happen. And time is not to be wasted, okay? Would you realize that Sunday, the 13th, which is just a little over almost two weeks away, week, less than two weeks away, we lose an hour. We've got to spring forward now. Another hour taken out of your life because of how they go. Do you know already this year we have wasted or used or spent 59 days? Well, if you had your goals planned back in January 1, how's that working for you? How much weight have you lost since January the 1? How many, uh, how many things have you gotten done on your list? Listen, time's moving on. If you want to have a future, you've got to plan and work toward it and stay at it. 
Everybody say amen. Because <laughs> time is a precious thing. Never, ever waste it. I uh, w am around here quite a bit, and I w I've got many projects going on. In fact, uh, over the weekend, or this week after tonight and into Sunday, we expect to have two larger screens on the wall, okay? We've got other things that we're working on, moving things, and we've got things going in the mail shortly. <clears throat> we've got TV ads going. We, we're working for what's going to happen in the future. And we're moving past just having something happen around Easter. We're moving past thinking into the summer. And you and I have to think that way for our own lives. Because I'm telling you, you've got to prepare for your future. Amen? And i tell you why. Because you can waste a minute easily. The lights. Fine. Can I have a clock in the It's there. Thank you. Roll them. Rolling. Action. Okay, here's the deal. We all know that life is busy. There aren't enough hours in the day to do all the things that we want and need to do. In fact, you're probably thinking of all the things you need to do next week right now, wondering how you're going to squeeze it all in. But the fact is, no matter who you are, no matter what you do, no matter how much is on your plate, we all have the same gift of 24 hours each day. It's 24 hours, 1,440 minutes, 86,400 seconds. All the money in the world won't let you buy one single second more than the next guy. And once that second is gone, it's gone forever. Look, there goes one right now. Another one, gone. You'd think that we would judiciously use such a limited and valuable gift. You'd think that we would choose wisely how to spend, no, invest our time. But do we? Really? I mean, after taking the time for eating and sleeping and all the other basic necessities, do we really use this gift the way we should? Think of all the great things you could do in 24 hours, all the lives you could touch, all the significant changes that could be made in your life and others. The fact is, you could actually make a difference in this world in 24 hours, or not. So, how are you investing your time? Life? Whoa. Time is precious thing. Don't waste it. Plan some things. Don't let yourself sleep in to the crack of noon. <laughs> unless you worked all night. <laughs> but you know, really, we live in a time when you can plan a lot. You can grab a phone. You can plan some things here. You can make appointments. You can check up on things. You can do a lot more because of the devices. How many of y'all know Steve Harvey, the, the comedian? <clears throat> Used to live uh, in the Atlanta area there, and maybe he still does, but he started out in uh, <clears throat> sleeping in a car and doing other things, and, and he, he, had, he had the propensity, I love that word, <laughs> to, to help people laugh. And uh, his program the other day, I saw him <coughs> interviewing some kids, <coughs> pardon me, and these kids uh, were current uh, kids, you know, 8 to 10, 12, 15 years of age, and he brought out several gadgets. He brought a, out a gadget that Susan Summers used to use. Any of y'all remember the name Susan Summers? And it, Suzanne. And it had a ball on each end, and you squeezed it, Okay. They didn't know what it was. He then brought out a, um, two little books. Well, I say little books. They were about that thick. Uh, one was white and one was yellow. And they said, well, they're books. Everybody knows that. He said, no, they're not just books. They're telephone books. You got a telephone number here with a name. You push the button. There it is. In our day, we had to go through the white pages oh in alphabetical order to find James Brown. And when we found James Brown, there were 14 James Browns. You had to figure out, you call, is this the James Brown? Hey! <laughs> you know, you had to go through it. But see, time has moved on. We, we have devices to help us. The yellow pages were businesses. So you could look up a business and find where it is. Right now, all you gotta do is uh, Chick-fil-A, 436, and it'll come up and be on the map. Push the go button, it'll tell you where to turn, not turn. It'll let you put your order in before you get there. Are you hearing me? All of these are time-saving devices, but they divide us from people. Ah, anyway, we move along. Let's go. I want you to look at something here. <clears throat> God's Word, it's never failing us or liable to fail. It's constant, unflagging, everlasting, inexhaustible, infallible. Sure, it is unfailing. 
The word will not fail us. So these next words, I want you to read out loud with me if you can. They come from a very prominent man in the New Testament. His name is Jesus. Okay? Here's what Jesus said. I am come, read it with me, that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Now that's what he said about you. Another version says, I'm come that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it, what? Overflows. The message says, I'm come so they can have real and eternal life, more and better life than they ever dreamed of. Well, that sounds, uh, you know, that sounds promising, doesn't it? And you and I need to realize that God wants to use us to help win other people to Him. So, the message translation having said that, there's another set of words I want you to look at, which is in Proverbs. They are pro-verbs. They're verbs. Evil pursueth sinners, but to the righteous good shall be repaid. God will take care of the righteous. He'll help the righteous. The Passion Version says, Calamity chases the sin chaser, but prosperity pursues the God lover. Well, that's me and you, right? So we can live, if we will work by the Word and work the Word in us, we can live without a love. Trouble chases sinners, while blessing rewards the righteous. So I want to tell you tonight, if you want to really exercise your time planning your future, one thing is for certain. Be the reason somebody smiles today. Turn to your neighbor right now and smile. Cause them, wink at, wink at them, turn and look. All right, I caught, here's a beautiful young lady down here on the front in pink. I caught her eye, winked at her, see if she'll smile. If you're going to, if you're going to live and operate like God wants us to, you have to realize God has commanded us that we should go and tell others and help them smile, help them know that they have a future. Now, I was raised in a different time zone than many of you in this room. <laughs> It was before dirt was invited. No, no, it wasn't. It was a long time. I was born at a very early age anyway. Culture has changed since I was in college. I was telling somebody today, they talked to, we were talking about math, and in the middle of it, I said, well, at my college, they finally asked me to leave college because uh, I didn't go to the math class, and I didn't go to the English class. I was only in the music building. Uh, but since my days, this is what was in the headlines in my days, is God dead? Isn't that a ridiculous statement? I mean, just, if you don't even know about God much, you'd think, God died? When, where did they bury him? You know, who went to the funeral? No, that's what I was raised in. But then, you know, the, the Jesus movement came along, and a lot of us guys got saved, and girls got saved. And we would uh, go to church, almost seven days a week, just anywhere we could with our guitars, with our keyboards. Uh, and uh, it was a fun, fun time back then. And today, I'm telling you, it's a whole different time zone we're living in. Because today, the people, by and large, it's all about me, me, me. <laughs> Dad, Dad got to give the iPod, the iPad, and he said, I paid. <laughs> and that's true. <laughs> well, well here, here's the deal about this. You and I have to realize that God wants us to get things done. And the problem with the church is we've got too much of uh, so little influence over the world because the world's got so much influence over us. How many of you have heard, honestly, in fact, last Monday night and Tuesday night, we had a class in here about the Constitution, and we talked about this, how so many people today think the pulpit or the church can't talk about politics or culture. Are you kidding me? God made people, and He wants people to help people know how to live. We don't judge people. We don't have to decide whether they're living to our standard. We just say, hey, here's the standard. And here's what we do. We believe this, teach it. And we that have found out this thing is real, 
we get, we get the fruits of it. We got the fruits of the tomato, the, the carrot, the, uh, all the various things, spinach, because we planted love into other people. We just started loving people, which is what he told us to do. If you don't love people, you're going to miss out the purpose of why you're here. Think about it again. Be the reason somebody smiles today. Now, those of you watching tonight, you, you are the church if you're a believing believer. And there are people, that we've got a, a good little group here tonight in the house of God. But the reason we go to the house of the God is to grow up and learn some things. See, we have to be taught this stuff. How many of you re remember when your mom and dad said, Son, now watch out who you're wa walking around with and, and how, who you're playing with. And I, I saw a, 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 a clip the other day on uh, parenting. And this girl was standing at the doorsteps and the boy was standing there. And, and the boy just wanted to give a kiss on her cheek. And, you know, and the porch light was on. And all of a sudden, uh, he, he just kind of got a little closer. And the dad walked out on the balcony right above him and said, Hi, y'all doing down there? <laughs> and they both froze, you know. Well, we, we have to teach kids the right and wrong perspective on things. Because otherwise, the world thinks that kids ought to be able to do and be what they want to be whenever they want to be it. And that's not true. You got to learn how to use money. You got to learn how to use your gifting. You got to learn how to protect your body. Your own, you cannot be here without this body. So don't let anybody ever abuse you or your body. Hello. And here's, that's the reason we go to church is to find out the right way to live. Morally, ministry wise, uh, just naturally, how to live and love. Now, I'm going to share you a, a short little video for you here. This may help you. Jesus gives every one of us a purpose for being here, and he talks to us. You get in study, you get in prayer, you, you get to doing things, and you feel an unction. I need to do this. I need to reach this person, aunt so-and-so, or your neighbor. And you, you do things to love people. That's the bottom line. God told us to go and love other people. Now, having said that, here's a little video that might help you learn what you need to learn in church, okay? Jesus, I am so excited today. It's like I woke up and thought, today is the day to get working for Jesus. Kat, I am so excited to find someone who's ready to take action and get things done. Oh man, I am that girl. Exactly. Yeah. Now, I've got something perfect for you, so oh. let's get started. Okay. What are you doing? Uh, stand up. Remember? We were going to take action. Yeah, but this is where I always sit. Right, but I need more than this. Oh, I know what you're getting at. Okay, Jesus, how much do you want? What? $50? Is that enough? Oh, uh, that's not what I meant. Oh, uh, all right. Well, 100 then, you know. I mean, you drive a hard bargain. <laughs> um, okay, but um, you might not want to cash this till next Friday. You know what I'm saying? Right. There you go. <laughs> okay, Kat, really, I, I do think it's great that you want to give, but I want you to mentor a younger woman. Ooh, yeah, right. Well, Jesus, you know, I'm not really into, like, teaching people and stuff. I mean, I'm not, I don't really get into that. Okay. Um, okay, you, you know that woman at the office, Amy? Yeah. I want you to take her out to lunch. Tell her about me. Um, well, Amy is different. I mean, like, <laughs> really different, you know? I know, but she needs to know about me. Mm, and I can tell the people at the church to call her. I mean, they get paid to do things like that. <laughs> I want you to do that. Jesus, I just don't feel comfortable doing that. No, Kat, the problem is you're too comfortable. <laughs> well, somebody say, oh me or amen. You see, the church has done a poor job in some ways of helping people know how to love. And loving is what we're about. Here we are, here's a good cartoon about it, the solid rock. And then there's all this compromise, complacency, 
and then tolerance of sin. You see, we don't hate the sinner, we don't down the sinner, but sin is what kills you. You can uh, take an example from me. My wonderful brother went to heaven at a young age of 57 because he determined that he was okay to smoke two packs of cigarettes a day and every two weeks drink a fifth of vodka. He was a tugboat captain. He was allowed to smoke on the boat, but he was not allowed to drink on the boat for two weeks. But he did that for almost 25, 30 years. Well, guess what happened? The sin, the, the, the stuff in the cigarette got in his body, and he sadly died with one-fourth of one lung just in a hospital in New Orleans, and we, his family, did not know about it. It's a sad thing. He was four years older than me. I loved him. He, he called me his little religious brother, but that's okay. He was, he was my son's hero, and, you know, he was just a good work, working guy, loved people, traveled out of his way to help people. But that little thing of smoking two packs a day, that's a lot of cigarettes. And drinking the fifth of vodka, uh, you know, quite frequently, it tore his body up. So we don't preach against the sinner. We preach against the stuff that's eating you. Sin will kill you graveyard dead. Amen? And here's the thing. If you want to call yourself a Christian, you got to realize this truth. Friends don't let friends go to hell. It's getting quiet. This is not even a Presbyterian church. Friends don't let friends go to hell. You tell them about Jesus and let them know how good our God is. Amen. I'll close with this. In the book of Acts, there's a great story over there. And just a few scriptures. I shared a moment of it on Sunday. Uh, they got a bunch of uh, guys, uh, James and John, and brought them to, to the courthouse, to the uh, magistrates. And uh, stood, they stood them up and said, you cannot preach Jesus anymore. You can't mention Jesus. Isn't that just like the, the CDC and the other kinds of uh, temple police today? You can't meet as a church. That's terrible. You're, you're singing and, and the, the people are around. Why are you doing that? He commanded them never to teach the people about the name of Jesus. Peter and John said this, you can judge for yourself. Is it better to listen to you or to God? I'm telling you, God's got a plan for all of us on how we're to do what we do. So they asked him that question and said, it's impossible for us to stop speaking about all the things we've seen and heard. Since the members of the council couldn't come up with a crime, isn't that strange? Even these things called, uh, you know, that presidents do sometimes, these executive orders, they're not law. It's just an order. It is not a law. Amen. Nope. But yet CDC and others are passing these things. You have to do that and they'll arrest you. Well, it's not legal to do that. Are you listening? It's legal spiritually for you to speak about Jesus to others and help them know they have a future. Praise God. They threaten them no more and let them go. The Great Commission justifies you and I, our existence on earth, we're told to be witnesses of salt and light. Speak his word into the body. This word works all the time. Well, let me ask you, did you get anything out of this tonight? I hope I helped you a little bit. You need to keep things simple. Whatever you've learned, you need to put to action pretty quick here. Let's see here. We'll go right over here and close it. I'm glad you were here tonight. I'm glad that there's victory. We sang about it a while ago. All I see is victory. Victories on my inside. Victories. In fact, I had somebody, well, I, well, I won't mention who, but they'll know, uh, that, that put a picture up today about having favor in their lives for a parking place. Can we do that? Sure you can. They did. And I've prayed this for years for people, for 
probably 20-something years now, that you have favor every day, you have wisdom every day, know how to make a wise decision, not a dumb decision. But you have increase coming to you. And you have wholeness in your body. You stay well longer. Why do you want to be sick all the time by adding all these chemicals to your body? And more than that, that you'll be bold. Hey, just be bold about it. And you know, when you're bold and not judgmental, it's a good thing. Now, when I got saved, I told people to turn or burn, get right or get left. And I never smiled. I just said, you can go to hell then. I, that wasn't good. I had to learn the love walk to help people. Amen. So, did you learn something tonight? Yes, amen. Glory to God. Heaven,